Let's break things in production. It's gonna be fun! <laughs> it's really not the best way to convince your boss. And it maybe hurts like my foot. <laughs> Sorry. So, let's pick a better way to convince your boss. This method in France, we call it the big clogs. In, I think here you will score it a bull in a china shop. It's really, really not the good way to do it. So a bit about me, even if Anna tells quite everything, I will just add a, write a book about DevOps and I'm an agent of chaos. My playground, I work from the French National Railway Company about trains. So we will have the first e-commerce website in France to sell tickets from train. And I work in the VSC technology, which is a, a small company who build tools to, for the best experience in travel in France. A bit of our story in uh, chaos engineering. We start to think about it in 2015. Try our first experiment in 2016. And it was not in production. To be able to do it in production, we try game day, and we choose uh, Friday 13th of January, a great date, great date. And we start to change the culture, and to be able to do it in production, our first Chaos Monkey were in May 2016, uh, 17, our second day of Chaos, based on 12 Monkeys movie. And this year, we are working to put monkeys quite everywhere on our critical application, play a lot of game day, and begin a Chaos Portal, a tool for us to follow all our experiments and what we learn about it, like last week when we uh, simulate the loss of a data center and try to see what we can learn about it. The first thing, the good thing we learn is no impact of business, yeah. Uh, the bad thing, it takes a lot of time for our people to detect what's happened, what's the real cause of the problem. So we need to approve observability of our tool. But let's go back in time. How we first convince our boss to make them say yes to chaos engineering. Every time I speak about it, everyone responds answer return of investment. OK. But between a project that can make you earn a lot of money and one which maybe avoid to lose money, Everyone wants to do the first. So return of investment is not enough. Rational way is not enough. You need to speak to their heart. And when I say to speak to you, convince your boss, it's all the C-level, it's not only one people. It's a CIO, CFO, CTO, and so on. So you need to convince every one of them to do chaos engineering. That's why you need to develop influence strategy. I won't speak about technology and tools. I would only speak about influence strategies. First steps, make it sound familiar. You know, you, when you use the, the word chaos engineering, every one of our C-level people heard chaos. Make it, it's afraid, it's, it creates fear. So in front of fear, of unknown, our brain have three choices. Fight, are you crazy? We, we already have enough critical incidents in production, or freeze, or maybe let's talk later, or fly away. Oh, I have a call, see you. So no, you, you need to make them feel okay with the, the name of Chaos Engineering. You need to share a lot of articles, posts, video, uh, the technology radar from Salesforce, everything you need to make them comfortable with the term Chaos engineering. Uh, my, my current bus is a new bus from uh, six years, months ago. I take around two months to speak about chaos engineering, but not with enough details. Until one day she said, oh, you speak a lot of chaos engineering, but I don't know what it is. Tell me more. The first step was one. She wants to know more. Second step, around your sea level, you need to know who they are, what are their fears. Personally, I use sociodynamics. It's a way to put people in place to identify what are 
opponents who don't like you or, or what you do, who are, who are influencer, waiver, passive, and you need to adjust your story to every one of them. The first group, the fools, mutiner, mourners, opponents, don't take too much energy on them. The only thing they, they want to do is to block what you want to do. So if you let them speak a lot, they will try to convince everyone that it's not a good idea. So don't use a lot of energy. They will come later when everyone will be convinced. The friends, the lot of influencer, are the good people, your friends, people who think chaos engineering can be interesting, and you may use them as promoters. You will make them part of your strategy to influence all the system. Because the most part of people will be passive and waverous. They will be on fence. So you need to convince every one of them to, <coughs> to do your job, to do chaos engineering, and to give them the right reason, the right emotion to do that. So you need to tell them the right story. I speak about survival instinct, fight, freeze, fly away. So we, we are there in the first part of our brain. We need to go in the cognitive, the concept way to speak about chaos engineering. For that, we need to use feelings and emotion. I don't know if there is no scientist in the place. I know this is very simplest view of our brain. I apologize, but it was enough for me today. So play with emotion. Of course, the first one, fear. Major outage happens sometime so fast. And also, they cost a lot. Uh, the first thing I did when I arrived in my, my company, it was to put money in front of every in critical incident. If you say you have an incident of five minutes, for some people it's big, for some other people it's, well, it's only five minutes. But if you speak about one million incident, everyone agrees it's a big incident. So let's put money, dollars, euro in front of your incident. And be opportunistic. We all have critical incident. In my company, we have in 2008, 30 hours of an availability of our website. I was not there, but it was the beginning of the strategy to improve our quality of service. And when I arrived in 2016, we, have, we lost a room in our data center. And right after this outage, I come to my boss and say, hey, maybe it's time to try a new thing. So be opportunistic. I love this guy from Amazon. I quote quite everything about him, like you build it, you run it from DevOps. But this one is interesting too. Everything fails all the time. You cannot <coughs> avoid incident. You cannot avoid failure. What you can have is to limit the impact of those failures. When you tell them to your CEO, he can understand because he don't, he don't like when there is impact, there is unavailability. If you tell him, no, it's okay. We know that we cannot <coughs> avoid failure, but we cannot limit the impact. He will understand and it speak to him or her. To your CTO, you can speak about resilience. It's a way to limit the impact. We use this phrase, this sentence, did not even hurt me. Every time we have an incident, we try to recover quickly from, from it and to limit the impact. For our head of operation, if you speak about sleeping, I was head of operation, and it was hard to sleep sometimes because you have incident day after day after day. Not always, but if you speak about sleeping and to do experiment in production to be able to recover quickly, I think it will hurt you. I will hurt you. In your sea level, you may have some people who are fighter. For the fighter, I use a red queen hypothesis. 
So it's, it's an evolutionary hypothesis about you need to evolve to survive. You need to develop survival skills to keep your business running. And chaos engineering is a good way to develop survival skills. You may have also people who are afraid of change. They don't need news. They, they, they need to do the same thing as ever. So you, you can say it's all new, but, well, not really. Adrian told it about right, right, right before. We did with the disaster recovery, incident management, crisis management. So it's just a new way to do it, to go to the cloud. Don't be afraid. And we are not alone. There is a lot of people and companies around the world who do it. That's Netflix, of course, Google, Amazon, but a bank like Fidelity Investment or even a French railway national company did it. So everyone can do it. And some, for other people, they want to do new things, to explore new territories. For them, you can tell them it's just the beginning. It's beginning to happen in a trial mode for the South South Rada. And it's a new territory to explore. We see today there is a lot already done, but there is a, much more to do in the future about this. So all of this story, you don't have to tell them to every one of you people on the executive committee. Uh, I use a lot this tale of the blind man, six blind men on an elephant. It's a story about six blind men who come to a village. They never meet an elephant and they say, I want to know what it is, what is an elephant. So every blind man touch a part of the elephant. The first one say, oh, it's a rope. No, it's a wall. No, it's a trunk. Everyone see a part of it. It's the same with your C-level, with your executive committee. You don't have to tell the whole story. You have to find the right thing that will convince them. For, the, for <coughs> some, will be follow Netflix, Amazon. For others, it's innovation, precursion. For others, it's stability, resilience, defense protection, avoid war during the next outage. Try to find every part of your, the story that talk to them. Maybe you're still not convinced. Maybe you think it's all bullshit. <laughs> okay, why not? Just I want to share some numbers. Numbers coming from leadership in the organization from Gary Yokel about how influence strategy engage people. You don't want to only convince them to do, let you do it. You want to convince them to become sponsors, to work with you, to help you do chaos engineering and help to improve resilience of your system. The best way to do it is inspir inspirational, making sense, make them dream. You will have 90% of engagement. If you speak about return on investment, well, it's rational way, it's 23%. Not very good. Maybe best thing to do is to work about friendship, have a beer with them, you will have around 31, 35%. So <coughs> the, the way you do, didn't have to use is to your straights to say, oh, if you don't do that, it, we will be dead because pressure is 3%. And in France, we have an expression to do that. We say that pression, la pression, on ne la suit pas, on la boit. We do not suffer pressure, we drink it because pressure in France is draft beer. So, pressure, 3% engagement, draft beer, 31%. So, let's have a beer together. <laughs> Join us in France. We have a lot of meeting, meet-up. Tammy we did come once. We hope that everyone here will come once in Paris, share documents, share experiment with us. We have a lot to say. It's all in French, sorry, but you can speak English in our meet-up. Everyone will understand you. That's all for me. I was a bit quick, but it's okay. We'd have much time to lunch. Thank you.